could see later if they want. You're going to start getting yeah. self conscious. I oh, lost the, We're I lost, live. I lost oh. the picture. Oh, oh you did? Yeah. It's yeah. probably behind something. Move around your other windows. In the meantime, we're live. We're the Starkey sisters. I'm Diana. Am I still there? <laughs> oh, and the, we have our special guest today. We have Esther Haynes is Woo! in the spotlight. And we have Mr. Les Hadley. And we will figure out how to make it so you can see us, Les. Okay. In just a second. All right, we have a little opening song. <laughs> I, I, I take no credit for the lyrics. Sunday Songwriter Spotlight with the Snarky Sisters, live at half past noon. Well, 12.32. Right here on our Facebook page. With our friends, we will commune. Because we're communists. <laughs> Featuring Esther Haynes and some of her magnificent playing and tunes. <laughs> well, wow. first up is Les Hadley. He wrote a book that takes brains. Then in the spotlights, Esther, over fancy chords she reigns. Like 10 and 20 dollar chords we're talking about. <laughs> and we can't <laughs> wait to hear her, the fabulous and fancy Esther Hayes. Hey. <laughs> <Woo! laughs> hey. So we have this lovely Esther Haynes. We have a bunch of songs that we're going to hear from her in a bit. But first up, as we said, is Mr. Les Hatley. Um, and Les, um, right now, can you see us? No, I cannot. Well, we can see you perfectly. And if you can hear us, we can certainly just have a nice little chit chat, if you don't mind. I look good. You look marvelous, right, Diana? More than good. You look more than good. Simply That's marvelous. Just Mom. pretend you're on the radio. <laughs> pretend, pretend we're Robbie and Weasel. Yeah. I'll be, I don't know which I'm, one. I'm I'll Weasel. Be. I'm okay. Weasel. <laughs> I'll be, I'll be Robbie. Okay. Les Hatley is a Washington D.C. area guitarist and songwriter. He's won many awards, including a Washington Area Music Association Whammy Yay. for Folk Contemporary Instrumentalist and Saw's Mid-Atlantic Song Contest Director's Award for his album Chocolate. Lee He's been nominated for Whammies many times and in 2015 awards. was inducted into the Maryland Entertainment Maryland. Hall of Fame. Folk da -da -da -da. His <laughs> albums made it onto the American National Chart. His songs have been included on several TV soundtracks, including For Discovery, Animal Planet, MTV, The Learning Channel, and PBS. His latest news, however, is the acceptance of his new book, Kindred Spirits, An American Music Journey, into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame Library and Archives. The 744-page, and I'm, I'm told 30-pound book, tutorial <sighs> memoir, detailing Les's 55 or 56 years as a musician in the D.C. area, starting with his first gig in 1965 when he was a BCC student. I went to Walt Whitman with the showman ah. and including not only memories, but photos, clippings, radio playlists, <laughs> and memorabilia. Everyone, welcome Les Hatley. Hey. Cheers, cheers. How are you doing? Cheers. Thank you very cheers much. You. Cheers. Yeah. Clink, clink. <laughs> <laughs> So Les, first of all, what have you been doing since March 15th? I'm sorry, I can't, I can't hear you very well. What have you been doing all this time, the past several months? Well, my uh, my main preoccupation has been um, dealing with uh, uh, cancer. I'm undergoing chemotherapy all the time, it's two years now, and that takes a lot of my time and energy. Yeah. Well, you look pretty goes. good to me, so keep keep doing what you're doing, right? Yeah, I do that. I um, I do um, a little bit some um, promoting the book, and I I work a little bit, I'm not much, and I'm, I started a another book that um, if I get that finished. Cool. So, so wait, wait a minute, you're writing another book? <laughs> What's that about? 
Well, you know, do you know who you know who um Mark Obsasnik is? Sure, I, I have his book right here. Uh, Rock and yeah, well, Roll he, History of Washington. Oh, part two, are you working on that? Well, I, I thought about that, but you know, he and I talk a good bit. And uh, he's been my mentor on the book on um Kindred Spirits. And he um he suggested that I not try to do a part two, but rather what I'm thinking about or I started is um more anecdotal. You know, the uh, Kindred Spirits is 744 pages of um, images with captions and some and commentary. Wow. Uh, but I, it, it came from the scrapbook that I started in 1965. And so what's ever in the book is based on something tangible that I got from somebody or what are pictures, programs, flyers, newspaper articles, whatever. Not, and not just about me, but about anybody I met along the way, my, my kindred spirits. Mm -hmm. It's restricted to what um, I can point to in the book, a newspaper article, a picture, whatever, talk about that. That left leaves out just my, some stories and um, about people that I can't prove just are. And so this book will focus on basically what's not in Kindred Spirits. Mm -hmm. Fabulous. Well, tell us how you started your first band in 1965, The Showmen. You were uh, you were all uh, BCC students? Yeah, I'm, we're having a little trouble Kindred with the spirits. audio. Can you repeat your question? Fabulous. Well, tell us how you started your first band in 1965. Five showmen. You were, uh, you were all I'm a ventriloquist too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, the, the um the showman was um started and managed by uh, Tom Carrico. Really? You guys know who he is. Sure oh, yeah. we do. And um Tom and I met when we were about 14 or 15 years old. And we um first had a a little trio that I don't think made it out of the basement that we call the Delmores. And um, after that, um, he started up the showman and invited me to uh, join the showman in 19, September 1965 is when we played at um, St. John, John's College High School. Ooh. That was my very first gig. And um, from there, we just kept on going, played a lot, and had a great time. Well, we have a lot of fun folks watching. Hi there, Ruthie and Reggie, Robbie White, Jane, uh, Diana's sister Jane, Michelle Murray. Hi, Gloria Suarez Fuentes. A um, whole bunch of folks. Um, uh, Diana, apparently your volume is a little low, according to Robbie. So maybe up a little bit. But. Yeah, um, Les, so, so Les, can, where can people find your book right now? Well, the easiest way to, to get it is just to Google Les Hatley Kindred Spirits. All I, right. I could, I could find a, um, a website, but it's easier to just Google Les Hatley Kindred Spirits. That'll get you there. And how do you get a book in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame library and archives? That sounds multi uh, impressive. Uh, impressive. Yeah. Hey, and and uh, Diana needs to turn her volume up. Hey. Okay. How do you get a book into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame library and archives, Les? Yeah. Um, well, I researched it, and kind of they um they accept. Um, donations but they've got a they've got a long list of um um criteria you know you can't just send in anything and so i um i contacted them and um, we wrote back and forth and they um they they wanted to have the they they, they accepted the book um yeah it had um a really great review by john kelly of the Washington Post, 
a great review by um, Mike Causey of um, Washington Independent Review of Books. Great review by Surf and by Mark Obsosnik. Didn't, and it did not hurt that the, uh, the, the cover art was um, done by Walter Egan of a magnet and steel fame. Wow. Oh. They, they saw it as um, something that does provide some history. And that's really what they're after. Of all so, of the things, Les, of all of the things in your book, the 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 memorabilia, the the ticket stubs, the flyers. What's your most prized possession? Huh. Um. That's that's a tough one. Um, probably in the beginning, photos of the showman, and um, particularly the one on the first page. Um, and, um, at the end, you know, the photos of the, um, things like the, um, Maryland Entertainment Hall of Fame and the Whammy and stuff like that. But, um, if I had thought about this, um, it'd be hard to pick a favorite. There's some great photos. You know, you said Ruthie's on the line. Uh, got a bunch of stuff in there with Ruthie and, um, some really neat stuff with um, Marianne Redman and, um, oh, geez, I'm going to forget more people. Yeah, there's about at least 2,000 people mentioned in the book. Wow. Including Diana. What? I'll, I'll go and buy it now after the show, everyone. <laughs> buy the book. Yeah. Find out what, what, what pages am I on? What page am I on, Les? I bet you don't know. Um, <laughs> we're, on, we're on page 80 and 326. Excellent. Two pages. How exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see the Beatles, Les? Did you see the Beatles when they came here? No, I I did not. That's sad. I, I didn't. I was in living in New York as a little girl. I didn't see them either, although some of my friends got wow. to go. I'm still yeah, bitter was, about that. Yeah. <laughs> but the, that's a good question about what's my favorite i i just don't know i cherish all of it all the people that i met along the way all the kindred spirits and uh, you know our own um rock and roll hero um abad Bayram. yes he um he's the one that unknowingly came up with the title title of the book Kindred uh, spirits. He called you a kindred spirit. Yeah, he was um, doing an interview, I think, with Robbie, and um, and he was talking about some things about when he was, you know, still in India. Um, is that right? I think India. And um, I, I sent him a note, message, and said that um, it's like you were here with us, and he said we're kindred spirits. <laughs> And after all yeah. these decades, I thought I finally have the name for the book. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty great. What's the wildest concert you ever saw? I, the one I think I remember is the Cramps at the LBJ Club, which was a little businessman's lunch place downtown. And the Cramps were playing. And I think by the end of their first set, there were no ceiling tiles left. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember, you have a wildest concert or best concert memory? Wild? Um, is my, um, my focus in the book, um, is the focus of what was my focus anyway. And that's on us, you, me, the rest of the gang in DC. Um, there occasionally you'll find names of, um, big stars in the book, but they're, usually incidental to one of us. So back in my day, what I cherish was following some of my local heroes, like uh, the Newports with them. Um, you, you're all too young for that, I suppose, but you know, Blaine Smith and John Hurd, the Willow Brothers, they had a regional hit record back then and that was great. And the, uh, the Chart Busters, you know, love them. And we got to open for them one time and um, the um, Fallen Angels. They are a great band. Yes. You know, I've got, I've got a, um, 
in the book somewhere a um, newspaper article with a big picture of um, Jack Bryant and another one of um, Terry Gorka of the Telstars, Jack Bryant, Fallen Angels. Wow. Wow. That was when Jack was a bona fide hippie. <laughs> As, <laughs> and the hangmen too, that was, they were in that sort of yeah. era, time, time capsule. Let me, ask, let's, let me ask you a serious question then. With okay. all the talent in this town, and there certainly has been a lot of talent in this town, uh, with everyone who made it, the few people who really made it out of Washington, D.C., like, well, Mary Chapin, but not Eva Cassidy, or Jimmy Dean, but not, and you can name, uh, you know, dozens of, for every one, you can name dozens and dozens of uh, Washington, D.C. musicians. Why do you think that is? Is Washington cursed, as Mark Noonan, I like to say, or is it something else? Um, that's interesting. It, um, the uh, review by Mike Causey, he included his review that the book is evident that um, D.C. is a lot more of a music town than people realize. Um, but, you know, the, it, um places like Nashville, you know, they, they breed them on purpose. Mm -hmm. D.C. doesn't yeah. breed fame on purpose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, right. But we're, you know, we certainly had nothing to be um, ashamed of. We have had a lot, of, a lot of people make it big. And I thought you were going to ask who was my favorite. Of those no, who I wouldn't do that. They're all your babies, right? <laughs> yeah, they're all my favorite. <laughs> yeah. Um, but um, I don't know. Speaking of babies, Ruthie says that your book can be found on bookbaby.com under mm. Les Hadley or Kindred mm. Spirits. You can find it if you search it under bookbaby.com for Kindred Spirits. So that's my little All right. plug. <laughs> All right, thank Fabulous. you. So. Well, I think this is great, Les. I'm so glad you could come on and be with us today and everybody at home, first of all, share this broadcast and you can come back and watch it and, uh, and buy Les's book. And Les, thank you. Now you're, now you are an official, uh, writer laureate of uh, Washington music laureate of Washington, DC. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. Thank yeah, you so much Les for appearing on our show. We really appreciate right. you being here. Right, thank you very much. I've enjoyed it. Yeah. I can't wait to get the book book baby. Me All too. Right. Yeah. Or go to the Hall of Fame, which I didn't there get to go to. Yeah, Diana's Thanks, in the Les. Hall of Fame now. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> in my dreams. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Sad face. Okay. <laughs> now we're going to go to Esther. <laughs> Esther should be in the Hall of Fame too. <laughs> Esther Haynes is a vintage jazz and blues and roots Americana singer and expert guitarist. She knows all the chords, the $20 ones, as well as the 50 cent ones. I'm a 50 cent expert. The impressive guitarist and vocalist received 12 Washington Area Music Awards, whammies for big band, swing, and jazz vocals. She studied professional music and voice at the Berklee College of Music and was graduated summa cum laude in 1989. Up until, I guess, this past March, you, you could find Esther at La Porta's restaurant in Alexandria, uh, at the first on the first Wednesday of every month, as well as venues that cherish truly great musicians. She works solo now, but has collaborated with greats such as Keith Grimes and has a band called You Still Have Hokum Jazz, right? With guitarist JC. Yes, I have. Okay, great. So welcome Esther. Woohoo! Hey. Okay. <laughs> so, so Esther, I thought, to Esther I thought since March. What? Hey, hey, I thought we'd share one of Esther's live performances to oh, start yes. off. All right, here Good. we go. Moonlight and you would 
So what have you been doing since March? It's, do you know uh, the inauguration was just a few days ago? Uh, Doesn't it feel like uh, it was months ago? Uh, it, yes, it does. Uh, <laughs> um, so since March, I've, uh, well, I, I'm hearing an echo here a little bit. Um, 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 I, I had to retool from, for te from teaching at, a, at Middle C Music um, in Northwest DC. Um, to teaching at home on uh, FaceTime and, um, you know, I'm Google Duo and stuff. And <laughs> so I had to retool starting March 13th. Um, and then uh, April 6th, I, I had uh, an, uh, I was asked to come up here uh, to Massachusetts. So I'm, I've been sort of sheltering in, in at a friend's mother's home in Massachusetts since then. And I've c carried on teaching uh, for Middle C and a couple of my own students. Um, so tell us a little bit about what it's like to teach online classes. And, and had you done that prior to the COVID epidemic? Um, I had not done it prior to the COVID epidemic. Oh, boy. <laughs> um, so um, I'm, uh, it's, uh, well, it, it's good to be able to to do that and have the option, it's it's pretty good. It's, it's a little harder because you can't uh, you can't uh, see as much, and you can't like help someone with like their positioning exactly. Um, yeah. Um, and you can't just grab things uh, easily. I mean, you have to have everything at hand. Um, right. <laughs> so. Um, but it's pretty good. It's really not not too bad. It's pretty good. It, it so, works. Yeah. It so works. are there some um, upsides to uh, teaching online? Are there students that you'd never have, uh, for example, that live far away or in other countries? Um, actually, I have two like that. Well, actually, through the uh, pandemic, um, families have been 
kids like me sheltering elsewhere. Uh -huh. And so, um, the, yeah, I've had children, um, taking the lessons from other states while the families are, uh, have, you know, uh, left DC for a while. Um, do, do you have kids from like all ages? Do you have very young ones and then some older adult mm, students as well? I'd say I have like, uh, they're sort of from, uh, I've had young, well, yeah. You could say K through 12, but I don't, I wouldn't say kindergarten. I'd say starting at about age seven, eight, and then up through a working adults. Um, and yeah. so, so you've um, been a teacher, but you've also been very much known in the DC area as a live performer. <laughs> um, I actually have a lot of videos. Um, I could put them up, but you know what? You've got your guitar there, and we heard you sing yesterday. Could you <laughs> indulge us, please, with just just sing for us? We would love to hear the beautiful okay. Esther Haynes voice. <laughs> uh, let's see how this goes. Like, I've been mostly teaching for all these months, so you know. Uh, so I'll, I I have this little list that we came up with, a uh, little set list here. So okay. let's go. So let's go ahead here with uh, exactly like you. Right. Uh, it's very similar to that last one that you heard. Many of these tunes are like that. So this one is called exactly like you. Uh -huh. That's it. Oh, I gotta take this off. <laughs> I know why I've waited, know why I've been blue, prayed each night for someone exactly like you. Why should we spend money on a show or two? No one does those love scenes exactly like you. You make me feel so grand. I want to give the world to you. You seem to understand each foolish dream I'm dreaming, scheme I'm scheming. Now I know why mama taught me to be true. She meant me for someone exactly like you. This is where I need Keith Grimes. <laughs> you make me feel so grand. I want to give the world to you. You seem to understand. Each foolish dream I'm dreaming, scheme I'm scheming. Now I know why mama taught me to be true. She meant me for someone, met me for someone. She meant me for someone exactly like you. Oh, yes. Oh, oh Esther, that is beautiful. Oh, yes. And a ton of people saying, what a beautiful voice. Robbie White, Esther Ann Haynes has an incredible voice. Melissa <laughs> Walters, hi, Melissa. She says, beautiful voice. Karen Dale, great voice, especially for the genre, right on target, so enjoyable. So oh, you got yay. lots of friends out there, girl. Yeah. Thank you, got yeah. some feedback. Especially during that that song, you there's a timbre to your voice that how I don't know how you do it, but it you've got Bessie Smith's little, you know, coy, yeah, coy yeah. melodic thing going on. Yeah, like a purr really, in the voice. Right, that's a technical yeah. term. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I really wouldn't know how that happens exactly. Just. Yeah. So tell tell me a little bit about um, where did you. Uh, what got you interested in the guitar as an instrument? Hmm. That, um, that, let's see, how did I get interested? I, it started in elementary school. It's funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it started in elementary school with a teacher. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. I, had an, I had an imprint. <laughs> oh, nice. 
Um, and so what led you to um, old standards and jazz? Like you could have been doing just folky stuff and here you are, you know, playing like Diana calls them the $10 chords, <laughs> you know? Um, what, what led you to that kind of music? It's really hard to play. Um, I think it was, I guess I attribute that to a ride in a ride from home in Arlington, Virginia to Virginia Tech with my brother. <laughs> and he, he had, and uh, he was going there for grad school while I was going there for undergrad school. And he liked jazz and I heard a cassette of Billie Holiday. Oh, there. In that car ride with him. That's what I meant, not Bessie Smith, Billie Holiday. Oh, okay. Okay. So, so I heard that sound and that caught my ear and just it affected me, I guess. So, we don't really care what order you do things, but I do want to mention that you are also a songwriter on your own and you have a lovely song that you played for us yesterday. Um, are you ready to play that now or do you want to play something else first um, and then come back to it? Um, I can try that song. Um, it's, um, that's not one that I, well, <laughs> often perform. I actually don't perform it, but I, I'll give it a try if you don't mind. Well, um, we heard it yesterday and I know you were, you, tell, you were telling us you're kicking the rust off, but it sure sounded polished to us and sounded really good. <laughs> So um, please, everyone, enjoy Esther Haynes. And this is an original song written by Esther Haynes. Uh, what, what's the name of the song, please? Um, the Place I Love. The Place I Love. All yeah. right. All okay. right. I'm riding down the open road and I'm going fast as I can. I'm thinking of the things I know and I'm going as far away. As I'm running, I'm seeing sunshine behind the horizon. I'm going far away to the place I love. I'm riding through the rolling hills, going south on 29. I'm seeing fence posts flashing by like the past I left behind. I'm hoping this road will open my pathway before me, and I'm going far away to the place I love. Don't want to run anymore. Past my heart, past my door. I think I'm gonna settle down in that town along the road. Gonna stop my running around, gonna build myself a home. Search for someone to be my loved one and live there forever in our cabin far away in the place our love in our cabin far away in the place our love. In our cabin far away, in the place I love. Yay. Thank you. That's 
beautiful. That's sort of a meant to be sort of bluegrassy, but not quite, you know. <laughs> yeah, very nice. So you can switch genre pretty quickly. So did, have you played a lot in your career um, uh, in places where people would call out, you, you know, songs that the, the you know, top top 40 songs or, you know, so, songs that maybe um, you hadn't practiced much, but you just had to just do it? Um, it I can't really, I don't have a ton of pop or, of top, or top 40 in my like repertoire on the top of my head, but yeah. if, if somebody placed a, like a chart in front of me and lyrics to I a song. I bet you could that, do it because you're, but, you're, you're so versatile. I can Thank see you playing you. almost anything and your <laughs> voice, your voice also can go back um, like a throwback kind of voice, like Diana <laughs> said, you know, Billy Holiday to this, which sounded much more like a, you know, like sort of a contemporary bluegrassy kind of thing. So. Thank you. It's, fun. it's if you have the me melody in your mind, right? So at least if you have the melody of a tune in your mind, then, then, then if I see the lyrics and then the chords and also if you have to put it in your own vocal key, so then you can sort of deal with it. <laughs> yeah. But so, so tell us um, a, a little bit more. I, I'm just really curious um, how you came. We were talking a little bit how you started to think about playing more jazz guitar. Um, so prior to playing jazz, were you, what kind of music were you playing before you started to get into jazz? Okay. Well, I was doing, I grew up with the, <clears throat> the folk, kind of folk finger picking music. Mm -hmm. um, like, um, uh, like uh, songs like The Water is Wide. Um, um, let's see, what is that? Deep River Blues, uh -huh. um, um, Freight Train, and um, Shh. Shady Grove and mm -hmm. uh -huh. so sort of Appalachian. Um, I don't know. I I definitely was influenced by that that teacher in elementary school. There, <laughs> they there was a um, a stage in the uh, multi-purpose room, and and uh, you know she had blonde hair. <laughs> she had a classical guitar, and she sang on that little raised. Uh, platform for us and then she offered lessons after school so whatever was around whatever tunes were in vogue then is what what we learned uh -huh. so she esther, was an inspiration yes esther can i ask you a quick question just yeah in, move your microphone a little away from your guitar it's, yeah oh it's, uh, gotcha let me move it up yeah like up to yeah gotcha Thank okay. you. Yeah. Thank you for letting me know. Let me see if I can get it to go and stay up here. Is that any better? Yes. Okay. So, so why don't you place another song and um, I'll set us up to, after we do that, um, I just want to show a little snip of you playing at the JVs because it's just such a sweet little piece. But can, maybe you can play something for us first. So, uh, Let's see. Um, why don't I um, just go in the order of the ones that we prepared? All right. So this next one is again one of these little kitschy tunes called um, "Please Don't Talk About Me When I'm Gone," <laughs> which is quite like uh, the sailboat song. But <laughs> I've got it on my list here, so let's go for it. Okay. Is that all right? Can you? I can't hear you. <laughs> We there muted you. ourselves. Oh, okay. Okay, yep. gotcha. You're on you're on automatic now. <laughs> okay, here I go. <laughs> hmm. Let me see if I can remember. <laughs> Please don't talk about me when I'm gone. Oh honey. Though our friendship ceases from now on If you can't say anything real nice Just don't talk at all, that's my advice 
We're partying, you go your way, I go mine. Best that we do. Here's a kiss, I hope that this brings lots of luck to you. Makes no difference how I carry on. Please don't talk about me when I'm gone. Ba 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 da 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 da. Ba do ba da ba 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 da. Ba ba da 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 ba ba da da. We're parting. You go your way. I go mine. It's best that we do. Here's a kiss. I hope that this. Brings lots of luck to you. Makes no difference how I carry on. Please don't talk about me. Just don't talk about me. Please don't talk about me when I'm gone. Yeah. Nice. Ooh, love it. Love yeah. it. Love it. So Les Hatley, who was just here and disappeared, unless he can come back in the room, you know, um, he says sounding great. And uh, Ken Roseman is chiming in and says sounding great. And uh, and Karen Collins and sounded countryish. And Robbie How Robbie White is asking if you can play. Uh, why don't you do right or Blue Moon? Just ask. Oh, I guess I could play the Why don't you do right? That'd be hmm. great. You want me to do that? Yeah, Robbie said he'll yeah. put a hundred dollars in the in your uh, PayPal <laughs> Venmo account. What? It's oh, a, no, I'm kidding. Thing. I'm kidding. But but that's a reminder, everyone. Please do look at the page and, yes. and toss some money into the virtual the Venmo uh, tip jar. Yes. Venmo tip jar. All right, Esther. Sorry, Robbie. I'm going to let <laughs> Les back in so he can be part of our party. Okay. Okay. Well, here's Les. Hi, Les. It's like we're, a doorbell sound. It is. <laughs> it is. Don't we're, we're, answer the door. Don't let him in. Okay, here you go. We're, we're going to put Esther on the spot oh, and make her do a, a request. Okay. Hmm. Okay. You had plenty money 1922 but you let other women make a fool of you why don't you do right like some other men do get out of here get me some money too You're sitting down and wondering what it's all about. If you ain't got no money, they're going to put you out. Why don't you do right like some other men do? Get out of here, get me some money too. Again, I need J.C. Vebe here or Keith Grimes. Ago, you wouldn't have been drifting from door to door. Why don't you do right like some other men do? Get out of here, get me some money too. I fell for your child and I took you in. 
Now all you got to offer me is a drink of gin. Why don't you do right like some other men do? Get out of here. Get me some money too. Get out of here. Get me some money too. Get out of here. Get me some money too. Cheers, girl. That was awesome. Yeah. Cheers. That was awesome. That's pulling it out of your hat, right? <laughs> Pardon? <laughs> That's pulling it out of your hat. Yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or something. Tell right. me what, when, you, when everything's back to normal, when everything's back to normal, we're going to get like 100 people and go to La Porta's to see you. Oh, thank you. When, when you open back up again. <laughs> So, I hope so, I'll have my job back when I get back. <laughs> I know. So Ken Bye. Roseman says about the song, he says, I remember this from Who Framed Roger Rabbit soundtrack. Correct. Was yes. it? Yes, oh. it was. Hmm. Yes. Um, and let me think now. Um, so Jessica Peggy Rabbit? Lee, Peggy Lee made it famous. <clears throat> right. And um, the original singer is Lil Green. Lil oh. Green. Yeah. In the 20s. I love it. Yeah. Such a slinky song. Yeah. yeah. And it's like actually telling the truth. <laughs> you know, from her situation, right? That's a right. Of, a lot of the blues are about stuff like that. Absolutely. So um, you love to play blues. You love to play jazz. Um, mm -hmm. What else do you have for us? I know you've got a couple more up your sleeve for us today. Um, <clears throat> well, do you want me to go ahead and try that newish one um for you that um sure or oh, did you want um, a little break and i can show the um the yeah jace, that'd be the good jace. yeah so the, you could yeah you could take I a little warm my break hands here. by the heater too because <laughs> it's cold in here and i've got oh, no. one of these space heaters so i'm gonna kind of warm up my fingers a little <laughs> yeah, and, and robbie white was like lisa's cold yes it's cold i'm in upstate new york <laughs> it's cold yes it's very cold <laughs> and where you are is cold so i'm gonna yes. go ahead and Share this, uh, share the screen so folks can see you playing. Thank it's you, JV. Oh yeah, oh, oh that was okay. That was a women in country thing. I was just going to just hear everyone, and then Diana invited me to sit in on her guitar. So. It was a command performance. <laughs> can you hear it? And I got to play with Mike Wood. I was waltzing with my darling to the Tennessee Waltz when a friend I happened to see. I introduced her to my darling.
<laughs> oh, lovely. Wow. I remember that strap was really low. low. <laughs> it's a punk, punk rock strap. Sorry about that. <laughs> Play down by your, you know what, yeah. belly but button. That, that was a but great that was opportunity. A, that was also Sam Goodall on the bass and Mark Lindemood on the drums. So Yeah, yeah I was about were, to ask. Yeah, and Mike Woods on guitar. So yeah, cool. Mike has a great crush on you. Just so <laughs> if you didn't know, Esther, I'm sure everyone <laughs> does, but he has special, cause I think it's those high dollar co chords that you play. <laughs> <laughs> attracted to those chords they're not that <laughs> they're really not that bad once you get them so. <laughs> oh well oh, great great well what made you um <clears throat> well, after berkeley then what did you what, what what did you have in your mind that you wanted to do did you want to be a side person did you want to be the leader of a band did you want to <laughs> i wanted to was... go sing i wanted to be like a sean twos in paris <laughs> <laughs> did i you wanted go? to play um no <laughs> I, I wanted to uh i wanted to sing like in the acoustic part of a an international jazz festival <laughs> like in in holland or something or montreux or something well, okay nothing's stopping you except after for, COVID well, one done. little thing yeah <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah like you know <clears throat> they have big names at those festivals and then they have like smaller acts and I got to go to one of those um in 1985 called the uh North Sea Jazz Festival um so um I got to see uh some interesting <laughs> people like Miles Davis and, and Fat uh, what's his name Fats Waller um anyway I got to go to one of those and um they had a lot of stages and they they had some small bands just in the in the hallways and stuff. So I was sort of fancying, <laughs> you know, I'd like to be one of those bands. In well, the you small... should be. You could easily do that. You and Keith get yourself a big band. You know, take over yeah. the world, right? <laughs> I still <laughs> would like to do that. I still want to travel. I love the idea of going uh, abroad and and with music. You know, I really have always wanted to do that. Well, it's funny because when we first started talking to you um, yesterday, it was the first time I've ever spoken with you. I've heard of you, of course, but um, you were saying how you hadn't played live in a long time. Right. And and, and um, so a lot of these songs were like, oh, God, you know, it's going to be kind of hard to just be on the spot and have to play them. But look at you. It's all come back. I mean, good thing we have memory banks, right? Yeah. Yes, yeah. it's 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 like a faucet, you know, you you open the faucet and it's a little bit like rusty and slow and then it starts to come back. Yeah. 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 So um, yesterday we threw us um, some ideas at you. Um, there was a song um, they started to play the small hotel a little bit of it. Mm -hmm. um, was that something that you still would like to play for us? Or? <clears throat> yeah, if you'll you know, um, give me a chance to like, I don't, I'm, this is one I was starting to work on months ago. And then I, uh, stopped. <laughs> so, I'm going to see if I can handle it. Uh, I'd yeah, like she to keeps try saying it. this, oh, shucks, oh, shucks. And then she goes and she plays yeah. it perfectly. Well, no this mistakes. one, uh, kind of <laughs> really, new Really, seriously. <laughs> so I hope Esther, I can no remember. mistakes, hey, you went, you went, you went through this with, <laughs> they, you guys indulged me yesterday. So I figured it out. I had to okay. figure out the ending. Oh, also, while you're figuring out the ending, Fats Waller, it wasn't that Fats. You might have seen Fats Domino. Oh, Fats Domino. That's the okay. one. Okay. Because Fats Excuse Waller me. died what, be way before you were born. <clears throat> oh, that's it right. was Fats Domino. It was Fats Domino. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, you're going to give us the small, it's, it's called Small Hotel, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and if you forget the ending, it's jazz, so you can play anything. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh it's just I jazz. Know okay. I, I, no, I we'll, know what to do now. We'll say I, I did that on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Okay, let me give this one a shot. So <clears throat> uh There's a small hotel with a wishing well. I've 
wish that we were there together. There's a bridal suite, one room bright and neat for complete for us to share together. Looking through the window, you can see a distant steeple, not a sign of people who wants people. When the wishing well says good night, sleep well, we'll thank the small hotel together. distant steeple not a sign of people who wants people when the wishing well says good night sleep well we'll thank the small hotel thank the small hotel tell. we'll thank the small hotel together. All right. Yeah. That one still needs some work. I haven't That's quite got that one down. Song. I looked that up last night. It's uh, Lorenz and Hart wrote it. Okay. And it, uh, they wrote it for a movie, a, a show called Somebody's Jumbo. It's a circus story about an elephant or something. Oh, really? And uh, it was dropped from the show. So cool. I think and Frank Sinatra made it famous a little later on in the early 60s. But yeah. Yeah, cool. Beautiful little I heard song. It. I heard it at a summer jazz workshop once uh, that I tried out. Um, and I heard, um, I don't remember the teacher. I heard her sing it and I liked the lyrics. So, and then just flipping through a book up here, I saw the title again. It was like, oh yeah. So oh, it's a good song. It's great for your voice. Um, so Ken Roseman was uh, li just listening and he, he asked us if you um, have ever played at Folk Alliance. No, no. Okay. Well, I guess maybe you should. <laughs> Where is that? <clears throat> Um, well, there's the, go ahead, Diana. Well, the Folk Alliance International is the mother organization and they play a different place every year, except they didn't, we, look, Lisa and I went to our first one last January, Yeah. Uh, okay. where we, where we got sick, but not from COVID, they, they told us, yeah. but oh. it's a, it's, it's musicians from all over the world. And uh, there's a library of Congress uh, folk challenge uh, yeah. where you, we, that's what we played and we put, Lisa picked a bill big bill brunzi song to do oh and uh and, the, and they have showcases and you'd be perfect for it oh, absolutely. absolutely we'll talk you'd about it star. later yeah, yeah. thank um, you but we have time for one more song do you have do you have one more that you can play for <clears> us <throat> and and then afterwards we can chit, chit chat a little bit more offline but yeah we'd love to <clears throat> so i i had best do the one that we prepared last night <laughs> okay <laughs> i don't okay. have another idea so, so, so just um, once again, everybody, this is Esther Haynes. Isn't she amazing? Yay, Venmo, Thank Venmo. Thanks yes. for this chance. This has been fantastic. Uh -oh. Okay. Well, Thank our you. pleasure indeed. So I'm going to mute myself. I'm going to go ahead and go away for a minute and let you play. Mm -hmm. And um, we'll say goodbye after that. So. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm thinking about the chord changes for this tune because... <laughs> <laughs> There's one way to do, I'm not sure which way is the right way. So I'm thinking right this second. Um, 
Okay. I think I know what it is. Okay. <laughs> we won't tell okay. anybody. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Do you know what it means to miss New Orleans, to miss it each night and day? I know I'm not wrong, the feeling's getting stronger, the more that I stay away. I miss the moss-covered vines, the tall sugar pines, where mockingbirds used to sing. I'd love to see the lazy Mississippi hurrying in to spring. Moonlight on the bayou. Creole tune that fills the air. I dream about magnolias in June. Soon I'm wishing I were there. Do you know what it means to miss New Orleans when that's where you left your heart? There's something more, I miss the one I care for, more than I miss New Orleans. Something more, I miss the one I care for more than I miss New Orleans. More than I miss New Orleans. Yeah. Y'all, you want to start a, a musicians commune in New Orleans? I'm ready. Oh, Go to Music fantastic. Village. Yeah. House. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's another dream of mine. I'd like Me to. Me too. Yeah. Me yeah. Me too. Have you ever thought about mouth trumpet? I've been starting to teach it to myself. And um, I haven't, but you know. <clears throat> You need to have something at the ready if you don't have a soloist <laughs> with you, correct? So, right. Well, maybe yeah. we can your scatting is is more than fine. It is. Yeah, I need to work on that a bit. <laughs> no, it's lovely. Thank you so much again, Esther. You were so good. It was so Thank nice you. to hear you today. Thank you so much for the. Really, this has been so much fun. So let's sign off and then just hang on a bit with us, okay? Okay. So everyone, don't forget to share and tip, okay? And we'll see you soon. <laughs> Next Sunday, we'll see you soon. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. All right.